Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, what's up? Do not forget to hit like and subscribe. So that means if you're watching and you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Hit subscribe now and don't forget to hit the like button and notification bell so you can be notified when I post a new video every Wednesday. So today we are going to be talking about client consultations. Some of you reached out and asked me, how do we give proper consultations when we meet with clients? Is that something that we need to do? So today I'm gonna to be answering all those questions, showing you a no fail method and how to knock out a client consultation right now. is a client consultation. So a client consultation is something that we should be doing with every client. And it's basically just something so we make sure we as a technician and them as the client understand what is about to happen during the service. So we're on the same page as far as what designs they want, what styles they want, shape, length, designs, price, all that good stuff. So we wanna know, we always wanna make sure that we're on the same page with our clients. So a client consultation is super crucial and it also makes us look very professional. So something that a lot of people ask is, do we need to do that with everyone? Do you need to do a client consultation with every person you meet, even if they are a regular client? I'm gonna pause, I'll give you a second to think about that. The answer is yes. We need to do a client consultation with everybody every time they come. Even if I've been doing this person for the last 10 years, I'm gonna go through certain questions with her or him just to make sure that, again, we're still on the same page. So why is this important? It's important because things happen in life. So we have a client that, you know, we see them every three, four weeks. Let's say within the last three weeks, now she got a new job or she lost a job. I mean, they may go from simple to crazy or from crazy nails to simple. So we always wanna make sure that everything's still the same, the same length, everything is still good with that repeating customer. With a new client, obviously we don't know them. We don't know their nail style. We don't know their personal life. We don't know how to address them. So we need to ask certain questions again to make sure that they're happy at the end of their service and we're on the same page throughout the whole appointment. So what is a client consultation form? So you'll notice in some places that you may or may not have worked at, you'll normally see this in a more upscale salon or spa, they will have a client consultation form. So a client consultation form is basically going to just ask certain questions about the person's personal history, their nail history, their medical history. We just wanna know certain things about this client and it's all filled out on a form and then they usually store it behind the front desk or in their files, just so we have this information on record. Why is that important? We need to know again about this person. They are a new client. They're filling out this client consultation form. We wanna make sure we're on the same path. If somebody is diabetic, if somebody has some type of medical history, they have eczema, we have to be very careful as nail technicians when we're doing massages, putting on products, lotion, scrubs, is this person gonna be sensitive to it? Somebody that has eczema might benefit from something, whereas somebody that has diabetes might not want to do this. So we wanna make sure we are on the same page. So if you choose to do a consultation via a consultation form, that is an excellent way to just have it on paper, but you still wanna ask the following general questions. So during a client consultation, what is something we do not want to do? We don't wanna come off as unprofessional, we don't want to do the following. All right, so what are we doing today? Full set? Um. Yeah, no? Yeah. All right, so you know what color you want? Um. It's all right, I got you. I got you, don't worry about it. So now we see what not to do. We always want to make sure that we come off as professional. We come off as we know what we're talking about. They're coming to us to seek our advice, our opinion. So we should be professional. We should sound educated when we are discussing a client's needs. So the 10 step client consultation method, let's get into it. Number one, we have meet and greet our client. New clients, old clients, just because there's somebody that has been there before, we're not just gonna say, hey, come sit down. 
Hi, how are you? How are you doing? How's everything? We want to be friendly. We always want to meet and greet the client. That includes smiling. That includes introducing yourself. I'm going to say, hi, my name is Keisha. I'm going to be your nail technician today. How can I help you? So we always want to make sure we introduce ourselves and make it personable. We shake their hand or cut some type of eye contact. We just want to be very personable, friendly. That is the first impression that they're going to have of you when they walk through that door. So we want to make it a good impression and a long lasting impression. Also, we want to just confirm what they came in for. So again, hi, my name is Keisha. I'm going to be a nail technician today. You're coming in for a full set, correct? They say yes or no. Then we can proceed to come sit down to the table. And mainly the main thing is you want to be yourself. We're not going to put on a fake smile. We're not going to put on a fake disguise or tell a fake story. We want to be ourselves because the number one thing that will make people come back to you as a nail technician, honestly, is not your work. There are many people that hate their nail tech, but they just feel so dedicated and they like this person and they don't want to leave them. It's your personality. So this is the time to sell yourself and your personality and show them this is who I am. Number two, we want to assess the nails. When they sit down, we look at their nails. You can tell a lot from someone by the by their hands. So I'm gonna assess her nails. Are they in good condition? Are they in bad condition? Is this full set like grown out? Is it chipping? Is it trash? Is it, you know what I'm saying? We wanna just look at the condition just to see what we're about to work on. Another thing with a repeat client, how did the nails hold up? If I saw you three weeks ago and now you're coming in and sitting down and your nails are destroyed, what happened? I need to know what happened. Was it my fault? Was it your fault? Was it both of our fault? So we always want to make sure we assess the nails immediately as soon as they sit down. Number three, the preference. So if this is a new client, I always like to say, what, where did you get these done at? So if it's good work, great. If it's bad work, okay, that's fine. Sometimes that just shows me a little bit about the person. So again, I went over this a little bit in dealing with a new client. I'll leave a link to that video and how to deal with certain clients and how to address new clients. But we want to see what they usually get. So if her response is, you know, well, I went here for this set and then I went to this other place. She's not committed. She hasn't found anybody that she's really cared too much to go back. She's a bouncer. She just bounces from person to person. So that tells me this is my opportunity to kind of maybe win her over or to get her stuck on a certain pattern with her nails to help her nails grow. Whatever the case may be, she might have left one place because she caught a fungus or because she didn't like the technician or now it's just the location thing. So we, I always like to ask, where did you get these done at? If it is a repeating customer, I always want to confirm is everything still good with the nails. So we'll get into the details in the next couple questions, but everything still looks good. I assess the nails, everything good? Yeah, yeah, they're holding up. So that's all I needed to know. Number four, we're going to analyze the nail. Is the length still good? Are they too long? Are they too short? Does she still want to do this? If it's gel builder, let's say builder gel, she said, I don't want to do this color anymore. Is she has encapsulated nail art? Are we still keeping this encapsulated art? Are we drilling this off? if it's ombre, so on and so forth. So we wanna make sure maybe they wanna change their nails completely. Maybe she wants to soak, it doesn't matter. But the point is that we wanna analyze the nail. We wanna see whatever she has going on on her nails, especially stuff that's done with the acrylic and the gel, that's what I'm referring to. So again, encapsulation, ombre, anything like that. We wanna make sure, am I taking this off or are we leaving it? Because at that point, she's already sitting down, I've already begun working. I need to know this so I can begin to take this off, if not, or stay away from it so I don't mess up the design if she plans on keeping it for another set. Number five, the lifestyle. So with the new client, where do you work? So what do you do? Are you, ask questions about their general lifestyle, type of job, hobbies, are they a stay at home mom? This is gonna tell me how they're gonna handle their nails. If she's somebody that plays footballs on the weekend, she's obviously not going to have these long nails. She's obviously gonna break them more than likely. If she's a stay at home mom, she might wash dishes a lot or she might be someone that stays at home and doesn't do anything. Maybe she has a house cleaner, who knows? But we wanna find out a little bit about their lifestyle because that's gonna tell me generally how she is going to take care of her nails in the coming weeks. If it's a repeat client, again, simple lifestyle questions. Oh, how's work? Oh my God, girl, let me tell you, I, I got fired. Okay, so that tells me she's not working anymore. So things change. In three to four weeks, Things a lot of things can happen. So we always just wanna confirm this. Again, these are general conversations, so it actually kinda is an icebreaker, but at the same time, I'm getting the information that I need so I can complete my job. Number six, we're going to have them 
pick out a look or a design. This is the time I've begun working and I'm gonna say, so what do you wanna do on your nails today? That's the time when she can start looking at swatches, she can start looking at Instagram, she can show me if she brought in a picture. So this is the time where I like to ask that question because as I'm working and she says, I don't know, I want something that's pink, but I want this. Again, if we have a different type of client that's indecisive, we need to kind of nip that in the bud and kind of finalize what we're going to do by the end of this consultation. So as confused or whatever as she might be, then we wanna make sure that she knows exactly what she's gonna get at the by the end of this consultation. So we're gonna ask these general questions, see the type of design. Can I even do the design that she's asking me to? Do I have the supplies to do it? Am I capable to do it? So these, this is why early on we wanna ask, what do you want to do in your nails? We don't wanna say that until everything's done and we're about to polish. Number seven, we're going to make a suggestion. So as a nail tech, after I've gathered all the information, I've assessed your nails, I've analyzed them, you show me the nail art in your phone of what you want to do, I'm gonna make my final suggestions. And now I'm gonna say we can do this design, I like this color, how about doing this design on just two fingers, do you want all fingers? We're gonna come to that final conclusion of what she's gonna get on her nails. So I'm gonna make my final recommendations and suggestions. I think maybe you should cut them because now, or do you wanna go a little longer, whatever the case may be. We're gonna make those final suggestions to our clients because again, they're coming to us for advice. So confused or as decisive as they are, we wanna make our suggestions about what we think. Number eight, this is your time to upgrade. So once we've established she's gonna do a fill-in, she's gonna keep this encapsulated art, she's going to cut them down a little bit, she's gonna do this design, I'm gonna ask, is there anything else she wants to do? Is there a pedicure she wants to do? Does she wanna add on a hand treatment, a paraffin treatment? Does she want to do a take home or a take home product? The, this is your time to kind of fit in and upgrade. Keep in mind, whatever you have time for. Do not offer anybody anything or try to upgrade them and you don't have the time to do it yourself or you're trying to budget it. Yes, we always want to earn a little bit of extra income, but I'm not gonna try to jam in a pedicure when I know I have somebody right after her because that's gonna throw up my whole day and I'm doing this all for what, a couple bucks extra. It's not really worth it. So again, if you're going to try to upgrade somebody, do something that you can afford to do, you have time to do, they're gonna appreciate and it can be successful at the end. Number nine is the upkeep. After we established again what she's going to be doing, I've upgraded her, let's say, to a pedicure. Now we're just going to make sure that she knows that she needs to come back in X amount of time. For example, if she's doing a gel manicure, make sure she knows, okay, you got to come back in two weeks. You pushed it last time or don't push it to three weeks. Your nails can't hold it. Whatever your suggestions are, recommendations based off of your analyzing of the nails. We want to make sure that they know the upkeep of the nail. Again, if this is a repeat client, we always just, they are usually familiar with the upkeep they know, but make sure you get them to book before they leave. But they are familiar that they need to come back in two to three weeks. They don't want to push it to a mom, so on and so forth. We're just going to confirm, throw that information out there. So they say, you didn't tell me. Yeah, I did. I told you in our consultation. So we always want to make sure they know when they're supposed to come back for their next appointment. And finally, number 10, we are going to repeat everything that we just talked about. So at this point, I'm kind of prepping the nail or she's still sitting down. I'm going to repeat. Okay, so we're going to cut these. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. It's going to be this amount of money. Do not forget to confirm the price. This is super important because if everything is done and said, and she says, well, you never told me it was going to be this amount of money that's a problem. And that's where you lose as a nail tech because you messed up and you were supposed to explain the price, especially at the point of making your suggestions. If you are making a suggestion and pushing a nail art on someone, make sure that they know the price. We're gonna just confirm, okay, it's gonna be this, it's gonna be that. We just wanna make sure, again, we're gonna repeat all information so everybody is on the same page. So now let's take a look at what a successful client consultation should look like. Hi, my name is Keisha. I'm going to be an L technician today. So we're here for a full set, right? Yes. Okay. So it looks like you have acrylic on. So we're just going to be filling these in, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So these look like they held up pretty well. So I think that we should just do, we're just going to do a fill in, right? Yes. Are the nails still good for you? They're a little too long. Okay. So you want to cut them down? Yes. Okay. Are we still gonna be using, you have gel, actually. So we still wanna use this pink undertone for your gel still? Yes. 
Okay. How's everything at work? Yeah, going back to, to the office and whatnot, you know. Okay, so you're going back to work now? Yes. Okay. Very professional, you know, somewhat of a corporate setting. So I need to, you know, just keep some, do something simple and, and whatnot. Okay, so no nail art this time? No. Okay. Okay, so what I'm gonna suggest, since we're gonna go back to work, we need to be a little bit more simple. Maybe we should cut these down, keep the same pink gel color, and then we can just do a nude on top of that, and then that'll be nice and simple for you. No nail art, just a nice clean look, and we can cut them down as well. Okay? Perfect. Did you wanna do a pedicure as well? No. I'm so I don't I don't think I don't have time today. Well, I do have a dry pedicure that I offer, so it's cheaper, it's quicker, and it has all the same effects of a regular pedicure. Still the callus and the toenail clippings, and we still do everything, polishing and all that. Would you want to try that? Yes. Okay, great. Okay. Also remember that when you have gel, you can't really wait too long for these nails. So gel, you know, it'll grow out. We're gonna lose that structure. So you wanna make sure that you come back. This time, you just barely made it. So we wanna make sure we book that appointment two to three weeks out, okay? So we'll try to do that before you leave here today. All right, so I just wanna make sure we're on the same page. So we're gonna be just doing the fill-in, no nail art, anything. So everything's gonna be around 60, is that okay? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now that we did that, some tips for after service. So after you finish the service, everything's done. We always wanna make sure we get our pictures for our Instagram, social media, whatever you're taking pictures for your own personal portfolio. We always wanna make sure we get our pictures at that moment. I find that sometimes when I send, they leave and I have them send me a pic, it's always some random picture. And I'm like, this is not gonna work on my Instagram flow, so I can't use this. So we always wanna make sure we get the picture before they leave there. Again, they know the upkeep, they have everything that they needed from the appointment and they've rebooked. Always try to get your client to rebook before they leave because it's better to have an appointment standing than to try to squeeze people in last minute. So we just wanna make sure we try to get them to rebook after the appointment. Okay guys, if you have any more questions regarding a client consultation, please leave me a comment below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I will leave the handle right here at Keisha Nails. And thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe and like, and I'll see you next time. Bye.